but it is 10 o'clock, so I like to be respectful of time. Um, so we'll just go and get started. There will be a recording, so anybody, of course, can watch this later. But my name is Temple Northup. I'm the director of the School of Journalism and Media Studies here at SDSU. And I thank everybody for joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about what it is to be a student at JMS um, and some of the activities that you in particular can take part of outside of the classroom. Before I get started, uh, we've got a few uh, members of the team from JMS here. So I'm just gonna let them each quickly introduce themselves and, um, and then I'll give you my little overview. So uh, we'll start with Alexa. Alexa is our advisor. So if you just do a quick uh, introduction. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexa Mokalis, and I am the undergraduate advisor for the School of Journalism and Media Studies. So if you do attend here in the fall, which we all hope you do, I will be your major advisor. So I'll help you with everything from your very first um, you know, set of classes here at SDSU all the way through graduation, whether you are a first time freshman or a transfer student. And in addition to undergraduate advising, I am also a lecturer. So I teach a couple of advertising classes in the advertising track. So I look forward to meeting you all. Awesome, thank you. And Christy, why don't you introduce yourself really quickly? Hello, my name is Christy Ritter and I am the internship coordinator. So I am the person you go to if, if you like to get some experiential learning, which means in the working in public relations, journalism, um, digital media, we have all kinds of different positions available. Um, and so I help students um, find the right fit for them and get some real world experience. Awesome, thank you. And last but not least, uh, our faculty member, Lourdes. Hello, good morning to all. Uh, welcome to our school. I am an assistant professor and I mostly teach journalism classes. Uh, I also teach some for the international studies program and I'm the coordinator for the bilingual program. So we are working on also um, offer classes that are in Spanish or uh, bilingual uh, for the journalism folks. And we're trying to work on expanding that to the for the PR folks also. Good to see you. Awesome. Yes, thank you so much. So at any time uh, during my, my talk, uh, if you have a question, feel free to type it into the chat. We also should have a time at the end that we can answer any of your questions. Um, so I know Alexa, Christy or, or Lourdes will be watching the chat because um, I can't always see it when I'm sharing my screen. Uh, but feel free to jump in at any time and just ask away uh, and we'll try to go ahead and get that answered. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now again and uh, just walk through some of uh, the points that I wanted to make sure that you understood about what it is uh, to be a JMS student. Uh, so first of all, uh, I, I covered this in our last uh, presentation, uh, which is online. If anyone needs it, I, we can, I can share a link later on. Uh, but our five core values, I just think it's important to reiterate as a school, what are the five things that we've identified um, really define who we are, regardless of what major you are. And so these are engaging with the community. So again, regardless if you're journalism, PR, advertising, digital media, whatever you're interested in, we engage with the communicate community. We communicate ethically and professionally. We understand global diversity. We think and reflect critically, and we embrace technology to serve the public good. So I won't go in depth in any of those, but I just wanted to restate those uh, because that really defines a lot of what we do and who we are as a school. And just in case you, you missed it last time or you can't remember, we have four majors found within the school. We have journalism, advertising, media studies, and public relations. And then we have other uh, minors in digital and social media and certificates in international media uh, and a mining and learning design and technology. Uh, and so we'll see actually here in, in just a moment work from a lot of these different majors. So these are student projects 
that were done as part of class. And we'll get to some of the student organizations after this, but I thought it would be important when we're thinking about what do students do uh, to understand how hands on a lot of their training really is. And so I pulled some examples from all uh, a number of different courses so you could see that. So let me try to pull this up for you and hopefully everything works for me. All right. So far, so good. All right. So hopefully you're seeing uh, a web page uh, that says active transportation. And so I wanted to show a few um, examples of what some of our advertising and PR students do for their class. And so this is an advertising uh, campaign. So they took on uh, La Mesa and wanted to create a new plan, uh, how to get people more active. And so this is the, the amount of work that they do. So we, they set defined goals, they do research. You can see all of the different steps that were part of the plan. And so I just wanted to share this uh, and another one here in a moment where you can really see how uh, real world the experience is. This isn't just a made up project. They're actually working with the city in order to achieve some of those goals. So that's working with the city. Uh, another example is uh, from the fall. Uh, one of our public relations courses worked with Meals on Wheels. And so again, you know, just to show you the amount of work that goes into this, here's their table of content. So they did background research, they ban uh, planned out what they were going to actually do, and then they actually implemented. So here, uh, you know, a, a common theme of what you'll find uh, at JMS is real world clients uh, and actually doing things. So here's a campaign that they actually implemented and I'll show you a, a small part of uh, one of the things in just a moment. And then they evaluated how effective was their campaign. And so you could see this is a lot of work. It's, uh, if I keep scrolling, 176 pages. So this is not a small project. We're taking on uh, some really serious ideas and training our students and getting them prepared for when they enter the workforce. Um, and so here, just an example, uh, I'm not going to play this whole video, but uh, uh, of what they're doing, they're creating um, actual content. So this is Meals of Wheels, San Diego Facebook page. And so the students created the video as part of this implementation, and then it actually gets posted there. So um, I'm going to mute it because we don't need to hear it. But this is what they were part of their project. Uh, and so it just demonstrates this commitment to this real world experience where they're not just conceptually like, let's do a video and maybe it'd go to Facebook. They're actually making videos for real clients that are then going real places. And so that's a real difference maker, uh, especially when the students go on to graduate and want to have jobs. Uh, having actual work that they can point to is really important. So just a few more examples. I won't go through all of these in depth. But this is actually a website that a student group built as part of a class. Uh, they wanted to uh, create a website that's talking about what are the values behind public relations. And so this entire project was part of a class and now it carries on. So new students kind of pick it up uh, as they go. When we go over into our media studies and some of our digital media, they do things like podcasting. Uh, and so here is a website that a student created uh, to, to launch a podcast where it talks about what are the objectives of the podcast and, and, and things like that. But again, this whole website and everything that you're looking at was part of a student project. Um, for journalism students too, of course, we're training them to be multimedia uh, journalists who can use different types of platforms. So this is a, just one example from the fall, um, since we're looking at the pandemic where someone was doing a story on surfing. Uh, so you can see their images, their videos um, as part of it. And, and so they're learning how do you tell a story through different ways, and then they're actually publishing on this uh, on the web, um, and then we can enter it into competitions and things like that um, in order for them to really do well. Now, I mentioned um, early on that there was a minor in LDT, and so this is learning design and technology. Uh, so it's not a major, but it is a minor, and if, if you're majoring in the school, I believe you can minor in it. And so this is very much focused on some uh, new, um, often cutting edge, leading edge technologies. And so this is just a few examples of some of their projects that they've done. Uh, they do really cool things like learn how to build uh, 3D virtual environment. So here they built, uh, somebody was learning how to build, in this case, the college campus. You can walk around, you can look around, you can learn information about different buildings. 
uh, San Diego, there's somebody sur uh, uh, skateboarding over there, why not? Um, and so this is just part of uh, what they're learning. And then they also do things like build prototypes for apps. So here's just an example um, of an app that somebody was working on about tide pools. And so they're doing these to really create and understand how to use new technology and use it effectively. And so this is part of the LDT uh, minor program. And so that is some of the the examples just of students work. So those are all things that if you're a student, you would be doing uh, your your children or if you're the student would be getting this hands on experience as, as part of the classroom. Now we also provide a lot of opportunities outside of the classroom to be engaged, to learn about different activities, to learn about different careers and professions. And so I also wanted to show you just a few more things. Now, if we think about outside the classroom, what are students learning and what are they doing? So um, one thing that we've started is a webinar series called Beyond JMS. So this is something that we do almost every Friday um, at noon, because that's when no, no classes are scheduled then. We're using technology like Zoom, and we're just bringing in professionals, some of whom are our uh, graduates, but most of whom are not, who live all over the country, and they come and talk about important things. So we have journalists come in. Uh, we had somebody from LinkedIn come in just to talk about how do you use LinkedIn. We had a panel on uh, artificial intelligence. Um, we had some uh, writers from Hollywood uh, talking. We had people from Vans, Warner Brothers, all these different companies coming in. Uh, and every Friday, any student, it's not part of any class, but any student can come in uh, and, and listen to these leading professionals uh, talk about their careers, give, get you know, career advice, and things like that. So that's one example of something outside of the classroom opportunities that we're creating. And we're hoping in the fall to continue them and mix them up as a hybrid where some of these people, especially who are local, actually come uh, and that would give just more networking opportunities for students. Another example of just outside the classroom experiences that we as a school sponsor um, happened in February. Uh, it's called IR Week, Investigative Reporters and Editors. And here we had professionals uh, zooming in, in this case, they would have done it in person, but spending a whole week with students, creating opportunities uh, for students to learn some skills that maybe they're not getting in the classroom or just enhancing their classroom experience. And so this is something that we're setting up, uh, all focused on the idea of getting our students career ready. So a few other examples of things that we do. This is something we just did. All these videos are on a YouTube channel, so you can see any of these things. But we had an alumni career week. And so this is where we created panels focused on our different majors of our alumni coming back and talking. So you can see on Monday, we did journalism. So we had a reporter from the Miami, uh, Miami Herald, someone from San Diego, and someone who's living uh, in New York who does design for the New Yorker. We had a, a panel on, on public relations, on advertising, marketing, digital, and sports media. And, and you'll see that from just the list of people, our alumni go all over the country, so they don't just stay in San Diego. Not that there's anything wrong with San Diego. I love it. I have no plans of leaving. But they go all over the country, and they're a huge, uh, you know, corporation. So if we just look at the advertising section, we have somebody who works at Oculus. Uh, Tim Ellis is the head of marketing for the NFL. Uh, Tiffany Arnett does the digital and social media for Disney and Disney Television, which now includes Disney+. Plus. Uh, and Doug Palladini is the global head for Vans. So these are huge people coming in to talk to our students, to really just give them opportunities to hear about their careers. Students can ask them questions, uh, and it just illustrates the, the many different career paths that exist uh, for our students. Uh, and more things that we've started doing, uh, just as, again, examples of outside the classroom things that we as a school put on, is we started something we call the screening circle, which is, uh, we call it, it's like a book club, only with, uh, you know, streaming media. And we'll take a show uh, each semester and we'll use it as a platform to hold conversations about some of the things, themes going on. So this past spring, we did it with Lovecraft Country from HBO. And we had uh, an entire learning module that was optional for students. And then we had three specific times where students could get together and talk about the show. 
And so this is just a way that we as a school are providing these outside of the classroom experiences, in this case, to have, allow students that opportunity to, to really think critically about some of the media that they are consuming. And the last thing I wanted to show you um, from this little section is just that we have opportunities uh, to, to travel abroad, both through school sponsored programs. And then, of course, there's a whole office if you want to spend an entire semester or, or year abroad. Uh, and so those opportunities also are there or hopefully will be there, uh, should be there by next summer again. Uh, and so I think that can be a really important part of uh, your education. So let me uh, now switch, get rid of this screen. And I wanted to talk about internships. And so we have our internship coordinator. And before I, I turn it over to her, I want to play a quick uh, or a five minute video just with some of our students and some of their supervisors that's talking about the internship experience. And then I'm going to turn it over to Christy, our internship coordinator, just to sort of talk a little bit more about that. So let me bring up this video and I will play it. I am Amber Salas. So hi, my name is McKenna. My name is Conrad Alvader. My name is Luis Lopez. I am currently a senior journalism major here at SDSU. I graduated in December 2020 with a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and Media Studies with a minor in Marketing. I got into Mind Groove as a paid search strategist. I'm like the immediate supervisor of when McKenna was working with us. I'm a journalism major here at San Diego State and the career I'm hoping to pursue is really just anything in sports media but specifically I'd like to be a beat reporter for covering a team. My dream career or what I hope to get into after I graduate is to be a sports reporter at a news station. And I'm currently working as an account coordinator at 3Q Digital which is a marketing agency in San Diego. I actually got the connection with the internship coordinator at NBC. He was a guest speaker at a meeting for the Daily Aztec, which I was at. I had walked out of the door to start walking home. He literally turned back around and walked back in and said, hey Darnay, asked him a few questions about some of the work I did. He was super great in giving me lots of great feedback. He even said internships are the most important part for me. Here's my email, send me your resume and let me see if there's anything I can do. The internship coordinator a few weeks later reached out to me and said, hey, I got your name from Darnay. So, you know, it never hurts to introduce yourself. A friend of a friend who has connection to a company that can help you get into a conversation with someone. Like it could be as simple as you reaching out to someone that was an intern through the same program as you, in the same field as you, and now they have a job in X company. That person that you, you know, had coffee with at your internship one day over lunch might be the person that's going to get you your first job. And so I heard about it on the Facebook watch group, the internship group that was created for like JMS students. I've heard about Mindgroove since my freshman year and I always wanted to apply but I didn't really have any connections so seeing it in the Facebook group with like a direct email contact I was super excited and then I ended up going through the interview process and liking um, paid search. I learned like all the basics of paid search so I got used to using like Google Ads, um, Search Ads 360. Having experience can be what you make it. I've had friends that did makeshift PR for startup companies that their friends were starting and now they're working for like super successful businesses. Internships are so important because you really get an inside look into what these people are doing day to day and you get thrown right into the mix. Uh, internships are crucial. Anything you can put on your resume when you graduate or even just when you're looking for other internships is going to be huge because at the end of the day, what different companies and publications are looking for is experience. They want to see that you can handle yourself on day one. We've just had multiple internships where we loved interning up to where we want to hire them. And I think one of the easiest ways to get people into like what we call a coordinator level, which is like basically like an entry level type of marketer position is to do, start with the internship. If you wanted to actually work there, that's probably what I would like shoot for. Do the most and like soak up the most you can, even if it's just being a part of your major and like connecting to your professors. I mean, I cannot stress enough how helpful the professors at SDSU are if you just take the time to talk to them. The San Diego State alumni family out there is really tight-knit and people will pull for you. I think the most useful skill I learned from that experience was just really getting used to like the Google Ads UI. Um, my job right now uses that like a lot. 
I would have struggled a lot if I hadn't learned about it before. The most valuable skill I learned was time management and prioritization, especially in PR. Uh, prioritizing what really matters in the moment is super important. Making sure you're prioritizing what's due first rather than what feels like easiest or most important to you. Here at school, I've learned a lot about the basic rules of journalism, AP style, how to write a news story, things like that. When you're there, you're actually dealing with real life news. I think it's not only so you can kind of get stuff on your resume, but it's trying to figure out like what you like and what you don't like. When you're there in the internship, you're getting to talk to people and network with people that you hope to be one day. It really just helps to hear from someone who's actually in the industry right now and you just learn how to do so many different things and just become really versatile. I learned all about video editing and got quicker at pulling things, knowing which clips are the best to use. It was definitely exciting to kind of feel like I was one of them in a way. Don't feel like you need to be perfect um, when it comes to digital marketing because a lot of people are still freaking out too. I hope this helps you all. I hope that it provides you a valuable experience. Good luck with your internship search. We have a great internship coordinator here at JMS. Always be searching things or looking things up online and best of luck to you along the way. All right, so that was a little introduction to interns, uh, internships, and the internship experience. Those are all current students. We just made that video for today. Uh, and so I wanted to turn things over to Christy so she can talk just a little bit more about the, the internship experience so you understand, um, because that's a really important part of the school is, are those internships. So Christy, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thanks so much. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. All right, let's see. I think I need to um, present first. All right. Hopefully that'll um, be visible to all of you guys. So um, as you saw from the students in that video, we have so many opportunities for internships in so many different types of fields, um, journalism, advertising, public relations, media studies, um, people bring ideas to me, and sometimes people come, um, you know, with an internship already ready to go. They know what they want to do, and they've already arranged it. Um, other times, they have no idea what they want to do, and I help them find something. So it works either way. Um, it's uh, great to see the many opportunities that are available, and I post these things for students. So um, as you can see, there's different types of internships. Um, paid internships are always wonderful to see. We, we would like to see more of those in every industry. Um, and it's getting a little bit better over the years, but um, still there's many unpaid internships out there in our industry. But you can get academic credit uh, for an unpaid internship. Um, and that's what you do when you enroll in the class that I teach, which is JMS 490. So um, I teach a lot of skills, um, a career readiness type of skills. So students who take my class um, will learn about writing a cover letter and a resume. Um, <clears throat> they'll, have, they'll create their own LinkedIn profile and they'll do practice interviewing and practice with networking. So by the time that they finish the internship, they'll not only have the experience that they, get, that they gain on the site of their workplace or virtually as we've done for this past year, but they'll also really be ready to launch their career um, because they'll have all of those things ready to go um, in their job search. So, um, or even sometimes, that people start their career, you know, they get a job offer before they even finish their internship. So these are some of the types of um, places, types of industries that my students have um, found internships in. Um, and then here's a list of so many, there are so many benefits of an internship, exploring your interest um, and gaining experience before you graduate, applying all the things that you've learned in class. 
um, to an actual workplace setting and meeting people in the profession and networking with them and, and learning more about whether this is the type of job that you really are going to like. Because a lot of times you don't know that until you actually try it out. You know, the what you learn in theories and what you think about and what you see other people doing isn't necessarily the perfect fit for you. But internships are a really wonderful way for students to be able to explore that. Um, and it gives them self-confidence. And as you heard the students on the video saying, time management skills, decision-making skills, critical thinking, these are all types of things that you have an opportunity to really hone um, when you're working in, a, in the real world in an internship. Um, and then you can demonstrate that experience that you had during your internship to um, attract future employers and build your resume. Um, and as I mentioned, so my class is JMS 490 and students who uh, want to earn academic credit for an internship, whether it's paid or unpaid, um, can, you can earn up to three units of credit. And you can spread that out over uh, more than one semester if you want to take uh, work only a few hours or if your academic schedule of classes allows you only to work a few hours, you're able to take um, to do it across two semesters, but the total number of units you can earn for an internship is three units. Um, and then um, these are some of the things that are on the, on the class side. So as I mentioned, resume and cover letter, practice interviewing, um, networking. And then at the end of the um, internship experience and the end of the class, what you do is present a portfolio of your work to a panel of professionals. And that's the culminating project of the class and it's coming up for my students um, in about 10 days or so. So they're all very busy preparing their uh, portfolios and we've um, managed to transition that over to virtual. Um, I certainly look forward to the time when we can do that in person. I think the networking benefits are, are um, still valuable in this virtual world that we're in, but um, it'll be wonderful to be able to have the students have a networking experience with uh, the panel of professionals who are judging their portfolios and um, giving them an opportunity to, you know, um, get to know them and their industries and, and see what they can do. So I, I have lots of people in the professional world who are so happy to volunteer for this because they sort of get to see, you know, the, the latest and the greatest um, student skills. And um, several of my students from last semester were offered jobs based on their portfolio presentation that they did by the judges um, on the panel at the end of the semester. So that's really exciting. And so um, that's the end of my presentation, but I'm certainly here to answer any questions anyone has about internships. Awesome, thank you so much, Christy. And yeah, so anytime, feel free to drop a question in chat. Um, just, I didn't say this earlier, but just so everybody knows, we are recording this. So if you do speak, uh, that would go get recorded. So to stay anonymous, feel free to just drop anything in the chat. The next thing I wanted to give a quick overview of are just some of the student organizations that uh, that students have an opportunity to join. There are a lot of them. Um, and so again, I want to play a few videos that we've made so just to highlight four uh, specifically of the clubs. Uh, so again, so you, that way you can meet via Zoom over video some of our students uh, and hear some of the experiences that they're getting. So let me just play these. The first one's for our advertising club. Hi, my name is uh, Kyle Agatel. I am the president of the advertising club at SDSU. Hello, my name is Cassie Gonzalez. And I am the chief operating officer at San Diego State University's advertising club. I am a third year marketing major at State. I got a minor in creative writing. Desired career interest is honestly anything that allows me to pursue my uh, passion for creative writing. I am a fourth year advertising major with a minor in industrial and organizational psychology. Now I'd like to get my foot in the door at a small advertising agency to pinpoint what it is exactly I want to do in the creative space. 
The most important thing about Ad Club is uh, being part of a community of people who have the same passion and career interests because once you leave college, keeping touch with those people that you meet through these types of clubs are super beneficial. You'll meet a bunch of cool people who have the exact same type of interest as you and I think that's what's wrong. San Diego State's Advertising Club is made up of a pretty diverse group of people. So we've got communications majors, advertising majors, marketing, IMC, international business, art majors, graphic design, you name it. We pride ourselves on providing internships, networking opportunities, and really hands-on experience to SDSU students from any background. The important thing is to get out of that comfort zone. I've always known I was a good writer. I love to write, I do it in my free time, but until I let myself be in an environment where I could actually let that process run through and let myself be in that environment to actually explore that, you'll never know how much you actually like it and you'll never know how much you enjoy it. Don't come into college thinking you gotta figure it all out immediately. Just let the process run and you'll figure it out. My advice to freshmen or really any student who feels a little lost on their academic journey is to put yourself out there, take risks, do things that make you uncomfortable and the rest will follow. Nothing worthwhile comes from staying inside your comfort zone. Hope to see you all at States. Feel free to check out our Instagram, our Twitter, our LinkedIn, and we'd love to have you at our next meeting. We do have an Instagram at SDSU Ad Club, and in the link in our bio, we have links to our group meet, our newsletter, and our website. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to send us a DM. Um, if not, we hope to see you all at our next meeting. So that's the Advertising Club. The next one I wanted to show is the Daily Aztecs. This is the student newspaper on campus. So here is a video they made uh, to just to highlight what they do. Uh, hello, my name is Brian Tuchinardi. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Daily Aztec. Hi, my name is Luis Lopez. I am the assistant sports editor for the Daily Aztec. I'm a fourth year advertising emphasis, graduating in May, and I'm hoping to pursue a career in visual journalism. I'm a senior journalism major, and my desired profession is to hopefully be a beat reporter one day for a professional sports team or even a collegiate sports team. So I like to say the Daily Aztec is like the paper of record at San Diego State. So we cover student elections, cover student musicians, films. We have a lot of connections with the local music industry. Our writers will review concerts. But essentially what the Daily Essex does is we work to inform the SUC community, but also provide them a voice and a place to be represented on paper. This year was online, but normally we have our weekly print editions. It runs like a normal newspaper. We have weekly meetings, production night where we put the pages together and the team of editors and writers that all work together. So it's really fun and a really cool, like kind of mini community within JMS and then also within SCSU. So back when I first got here, I immediately joined the Daily Aztec. That first semester, I was already a staff member, already covering sports. And then actually at the end of the semester, I actually went to New Mexico to cover the football team because they were playing in the, in the New Mexico Bowl against Central Michigan. But it was a really good time and it was cool getting to cover a bowl game. I mean, it's one, it's one thing to be covering like the regular season games, like back when they were at like Qualcomm and stuff or like basketball games here in Viejas, but when you actually go to a bowl game like that, it's nationally televised on ESPN. I ended up seeing myself on TV on some of the replays later. So it, that was a really cool experience. Definitely my favorite in my first semester here. There's no other place on campus where you can get that sort of writing experience, especially journalistic writing. You learn it in your classes, but what's nice about the Daily Aztec is it gives you the opportunity to publish your name, get your name in print and... You know, just joining student papers is a great way to get yourself clips and I got a podcast with them, I do video content, I anchor the live broadcast sometimes. So it's just a really good way of like, building your portfolio. Pretty soon I'll be applying for like full-time jobs. So for them to be able to see that and my experience with the student newspaper is gonna be just really important for my career going forward. If you're a journalism major or a journalism emphasis, the Daily Aztec is the perfect place for you. You'll get hands-on experience, writing, publishing work, editing. Also, if you're interested in producing video broadcasts, we have a team that'll teach you all the basics of Premiere. A lot of alumni, DA alumni have gotten jobs at news stations right outside of college because of the Daily Aztec. I think the best thing about the Daily Aztec is you can come in and it's it's low stakes. Like you can come in and you can make those like beginner mistakes without having to worry too much about like, oh, is this gonna go out to the public or is this, you know, gonna 
ruin my career or derail anything because it's not. You can come in, you can learn from people who are also in the process of learning. So you can come in, kind of get the training wheels and eventually it can train you to become like a professional reporter. It's where you can network and learn the skills that'll help you be successful in your career. But it's also open to any major. So if you just are interested in writing, um, our opinion section, we have a lot of um, rhetoric and writing studies majors, political science majors. It's really open to anyone. If you're willing to write, we'll take you. Make sure to follow The Daily Aztec on Twitter and Instagram at The Daily Aztec. Follow our content. We're really happy to have you guys here. And make sure to stop in at our booth sometime when that starts up again. And good luck and welcome to state. All right, so our next one I'm going to show is for the PR club. So we got this one and then one other video. I'm Taylor Peterson. I'm a senior this year. I'm graduating in May of 2021. I'm Gabby. I'm vice president of PRSSA. I'm a junior and I'm also a journalism major with a public relations emphasis. I'm a public relations major, which technically is a journalism major with a PR emphasis. My kind of dream job would be to be doing like PR marketing in the music industry. I'm a third year and I plan to graduate in fall uh, 2021. My dream job would be something in the lifestyle industry of PR or consumer packaged goods, so like food, or beverage, or something like that. I first heard about PRSSA from uh, classroom outreach. They came into a couple of classrooms and kind of did a little spiel about what PRSSA is. At my freshman orientation, Alexa McCallis had mentioned PRSSA, and so I'm pretty sure right after that I like decided it was definitely something I wanted to join. Before I was president, I was the director of internal affairs. When we had exciting things that came, like internships and stuff that were given to us, I got to kind of help people figure out where they wanted to be. We're centered and focused around PR majors. But really, it's we're open to all majors, especially if you plan to just work with any kind of brand post-college. We basically have a speaker for the most part. They're usually PR professionals um, who kind of tell a little bit about their story. And also, it's more just kind of their tips and tricks and how they got started. Clubs are really helpful to really get your feet wet of exactly figuring out what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Taking different classes, joining different clubs, testing the waters everywhere and figuring out what fits best with you. Yeah, just try to soak in as much information as possible to make those decisions. You know, joining all kinds of clubs, taking different classes can really help clear the path for you. Joining PRSSA, obviously you get access to a big group of fellow professionals who are kind of in the same part of life that you are in, different scholarships that PRSSA National um, puts on, which is fun and exciting. You get access to all of our meetings with our guest speakers. If you want to join PRSSA, um, feel free to follow us on Instagram. That's the best way to kind of keep in contact and figure out what's going on with us. There's always regular updates on there of when we're meeting. I'll be around next semester, so I really hope that I'll see you guys there at our meetings. It's a super fun club and I love all the people in it, so I hope to see you there. One more student club I wanted to show you uh, was our actually newest club, NABJ, National Association of Black Journalists. And so let me show this and then we'll... Hi, I'm Malia Jaren and I'm the founding president of NABJ SDSU. Hi, I'm Danielle Scott. I am the social media coordinator for NABJ SDSU. I'm a senior journalism major. I'm interested in print journalism and 
writing for arts and entertainment, and I would like to write for a lifestyle or fashion publication one day. I am a senior here at SDSU looking to go into the journalism field in entertainment, media, or fashion industry. So even though NABJ stands for National Association of Black Journalists, it's really open to anybody. When I started this chapter, I created it because within the JMS school specifically, there weren't a lot of black students, and so I really wanted to have a space where we could, you know, connect and collaborate. But regardless of that, you know, anybody's welcome if you're interested in print, broadcast, um, PR, any type of media related um, area, we are here for you and we hope that you, know, you can join and just network with us further. What I've really enjoyed most about this experience is like being able to hear from other professionals in the industry. I feel like I learned so much from their mistakes, their trials, their tribulations. I mean, they just have so much wisdom. And there's people that we've had on the meetings that I'm like, let me connect with them on LinkedIn. Let me make these connections because I mean, there's so much value in that nowadays. So for anybody who is undeclared or isn't sure, you know, what area they want to go into, just try new things, whether it be joining NABJ or another organization, you know, I just encourage you to do it because you never know what you may like. And then I also, you know, encourage you to maybe even reach out to professors because they have a lot of knowledge. I'm sure they would be happy to kind of guide you in a certain direction. I'm a senior and I'm still like kind of changing my mind along the way. Like there's really no like, perfect way to go about college and it can be kind of intimidating and scary, but kind of like what Aaliyah is saying, I feel like it's really important to just try different things and really keep your options open this is the time where you can really just immerse yourself in different things it's really okay to not know what you want to do and just be unsure have faith and confidence that you'll figure it out along the way follow our instagram for updates uh it's at nabj sdsu and our twitter because we're pretty active on there we post our upcoming events and meetings yeah so like Aaliyah was saying we do have our monthly meetings but we also have special guest speakers so we have a lot of good ones lined up for the rest of this semester but yeah again i just hope that we can have some new faces in our meetings and that some of you all will join us so you can of course email us or dm us with any questions we'd be happy to answer and yeah hope to see you guys there thank you so much So I hope that just gave you a little overview of some of the clubs. Uh, there are others on the screen um, that we didn't make videos for everything, um, but it's a, a nice slice of what we do. And it was an opportunity I uh, wanted you to hear some some of our actual students, uh, what they're up to and what they're what they're doing. The last thing I'll just very quickly brief uh, uh, touch on are just some other initiatives and some of our plans, just so you can see all the things that we do outside of the classroom. One is we, are, we have a partnership with uh, the JMS Residential Life. Uh, so we have a, a learning community. So if you're a first year student uh, coming to live on campus, you can actually join that. And so that gives extra uh, sort of sense of community early on. You take a class together, um, I'm actually teaching it in the fall, uh, where we just talk about what it is to be a JMS major, what it is to be a student at SDSU, and, it, and it's just a great way to start building a community very early on. We have many different centers um, that's part of the school. The one I just wanted to highlight is the Glenn Broom Center. Uh, it's focused on PR, but they bring in speakers. They have programs uh, in non-pandemic times where they'll go up to Los Angeles and, and meet there uh, with professionals. Uh, KPBS is a great partner. They're on they're on campus, so we have lots of students who intern there. And then um, I'm going to let Lourdes, um, our faculty member, talk a little bit about some of our upcoming um, partnerships that we're working on for the next few years, one with Next Generation Radio and one with Columbia, uh, the country, not the university. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'll, I'll let Lourdes talk for a few minutes and then we'll just have a, a little bit of time left for any questions you may have.